FMC board certified functional medicine health coach and fitness instructor, personal trainer. I am Amita from Nourish Talk, a global platform and community to showcase success in functional, holistic, and natural medicine. I'd like to introduce all of our viewers to Jody Franklin. Welcome, Jody. Thank you so much, Amita. It's such an honor to be here. And it's funny because this journey happened so quickly for me literally uh, only been five years. Uh, five years ago, I knew nothing about this field and now I have a full practice with a wait list. So it's very interesting. But um, just to give you a little background on me, first of all, just to mention that disclaimer, I am, um, I'm just practicing as a health coach and this isn't meant to be const construed as metal medical advice, although I do work with a lot of autoimmune diseases and have had a lot of success with it. So I wanna show you that. But just to give you a quick background on me, um, as I mentioned, I was a wellness industry veteran in the, in the, in the um, actually health club industry, more on the management side of that. And I came down with my own autoimmune disease. I had chronic urticaria, which is hives, around the time I turned 25. And this was awful. It was very debilitating. A lot of people think, oh, hives, it's a little skin irritation. Well, this is to the point where I would have... Um, aches in my joints. I wouldn't be able to walk some days because of the inflammation on my feet. And uh, at night, I would spend most nights scratching in my sleep till I bled and I couldn't sleep most nights um, successfully. So this was pretty chronic for about 20 years. And I decided to clean up my diet a little bit into my 40s just to see, you know, me take off a few vanity pounds. And I realized that my hives were bothering me less. And this sort of led me down this, this path of saying, okay, if food can do this, what else can I do? And I, was, I became an avid uh, consumer of all things nutrition and, and, and a little bit into the functional medicine world until I decided um, to make a career of it when I turned 50. I think I had a bit of a midlife crisis and said, what do I really want to do with my life? So I went on to become a health coach and learned a lot about nutrition as well. Uh, and I was a certified fitness trainer, as you said, instructor and trainer for 32 years. That was just something I always did on the side, which I enjoyed quite a bit. But I went on from the health coaching to become certified in functional medicine. And this is where my life really changed because I found out the root causes of my own autoimmune disease and put myself into complete remission, which was amazing, just using myself as my own client. And uh, I feel so much better now. I'm in my mid 50s now and feel better than I did in my 20s. I have more energy. I think more clearly. I, am, I don't get hives anymore. I don't have to worry about that. I'm not exhausted anymore. So it, it's so exciting for me to be able to help people do the same thing. And, uh, and I just think it's great that I was able to do it with that, you know, in the absence of going to medical school and trying to figure all that out. Um, but now I am also a teaching consultant and on the leadership team for the School of Applied Functional Medicine. That's where I learned how to do all this. Uh, Tracy Harrison is the founder and lead educator. She's a scientist by background. So this is very evidence-based. She actually has three degrees from MIT uh, chemistry background. And so everything she teaches really is very scientifically grounded and it really works. So I just wanted to give you a little background on that. These are some of the, my specialties here. No surprise, I, I actually um, specialize in autoimmune skin as well, but I also work with depression, anxiety, gut issues, um, autoimmune diseases, et cetera, um, asthma, allergy, ADD, you name it. Uh, it's all basically the same causes almost uh, where, where it's some kind of breakdown in the body that has to be figured out. But I'm going to go over today some success stories and how to unwind disease, some uh, really useful information that you can take right away and start doing yourself to help your own bodies heal. I'll tell you some of the testing that I use and just basically explain that your bodies have a tremendous ability to heal. And optimal health is not complicated, and I'm gonna explain all about that. So looking forward to going through this. But this first slide here, uh, I want you to meet one of, my, one of my success stories. This guy's name was John. He had chronic psoriatic arthritis and severe joint and muscle pain. And you can see on the left side, that is actually his thumb. Um, and his hands were so debilitated. The bottom right of the first picture is actually a, um, a, a few, about four or five months in, you can see he's starting to heal. But he had such chronic pain that he couldn't even tie his shoes. 
He couldn't do his woodworking. He was retired, but he loved to, you know, build and, and um, beautiful woodwork. He couldn't do his hobbies. And he was just uh, really um, just debilitated by the pain of it and the discomfort of it. And he was on prednisone, which is an immunosuppressant. Uh, um, and uh, every time he had to taper off the immunosuppressant, he would just have a tremendous flare and it would just be unbearable. So uh, you go on to the next one, I'll show you what happened with John. So you can see on the bottom, there is his recovery. He is now 95% free from psoriasis and he could be 100% free, but he has a few things he likes to do uh, that, uh, that uh, make it so that he's not quite there, but he's pretty close. But he is 100% um, pain free and uh, feels fantastic. And as a matter of fact, this has been a big source for me for referrals. He's uh, referred uh, several people to me just saying, yo, you, any, anyone who has a problem, he went from being very skeptical to being a big believer in functional medicine and telling everybody, oh my gosh, you have to do this. And his appearance changed so much. He actually lost 30 pounds in the process. 30, his big belly, uh, beer belly <laughs> went away. So he feels fantastic and he has a lot more energy and, uh, um, just uh, wonderful, uh, pain-free, off all his medications. And this was within five months. So you can imagine. Now, does everybody heal this quickly? Not necessarily, uh, but some people even heal faster. It just depends on the person and what the issues are. So I'm gonna show you some of the under underlying issues ahead. So you can go on to the next one. But it's important to understand what your body has to deal with. So go to the next one. And you can see that a big part of the problem is we are malnourished. Food today has so many fewer nutrients than it did even just 30 or 40 years ago. And this is for various reasons. There's topsoil erosion, uh, there's hybridization of foods. If you look at an apple today, they're huge, right? Well, they have the same root system, so they're not sucking up any more minerals and, and vitamins and nutrients than the old apples that were tiny. So you have to think of all that. When, when things are bigger than they are, it doesn't mean they're more nutritionally dense. So we have fewer nutrients, and, and not only that, we're eating a lot of um, refined foods, and we'll talk about that after, uh, packaged foods that don't have, they're really devoid of nutrients. Um, we have toxicity at unprecedented levels. There are thousands and thousands of uh, new chemicals introduced <laughs> every year, a few thousand every year, and uh, just so many that wreak havoc with our, our systems, and I'll talk more about that as well. And of course, we're very stressed from both a physiological standpoint where some things are going on in our gut or maybe we have issues that are causing physiological stress like mold or Lyme disease or, or all kinds of uh, gut bugs to, uh, to psychological stress, especially now with COVID-19 being such a, a horrible um, source of stress for so many people, financial um, uncertainty and you know all kinds of uh, issues there and having uh, social isolation, et cetera. And of course, we're infected, um, some of us <laughs> with the COVID itself, others with things like H. pylori infections or viruses, um, all kinds of problems there. We're inflamed, which we'll talk about a little more. And also, um, a lot of people just don't realize how critical sleep is to their healing. And people like to stay up late and, uh, you know, watch reruns of Little House on the Prairie and lie on the couch and, and stay up a little longer, but you don't realize that this is really taking its toll on your immune system. But on the other hand, we want to thrive, grow, reproduce, be thin, be able to eat anything we want, feel fantastic, have lots of energy. And there is a real disconnect here because what we're doing, the input is uh, completely different from what, uh, what we are expecting. So it just doesn't make sense. And so Mother Nature steps in and says, not so fast. That's not what, um, it's really your body's doing what it means to be doing uh, in the environment in which you're asking it to live. So here are some of the main contributors to um, the immune system. And lifestyle is so huge. I mean, everything we do, if we're not getting out in nature, uh, you know, if we're, if we're doing self-numbing, uh, you know, drinking a lot of alcohol or smoking cigarettes. Obviously, these are big, big uh, immunosuppressant uh, activities. Um, uh, not immunosuppressant, but uh, it'll aggravate your immune system. And then uh, the food we're eating, we're going to talk a little more about that. We talked a little bit about nutrient availability, how it's just not the way it used to be. 
Um, digestion is important. We say it's not important what you eat, but more importantly, what you are able to digest and absorb. And if you have low stomach acid or H. pylori or uh, issues with pancreatic enzymes, or you don't have a gallbladder anymore, you're probably not digesting optimally. So these are all issues we look at. Uh, we look at environmental toxins, um, the environment and toxins, environmental toxins and toxins that we use in everyday products. I had no idea about this. I actually used to love to use, you know, makeup that I would buy in a department store. And, and the, um, I thought I was doing well buying my, my um, personal care products at Whole Foods because I thought they were safer. But in reality, they're really not. Um, very few of them are, are really, really safe. So that's another thing. And then genetics. We have a genetic tendency, some of us, uh, we might have some genetic SNPs that cause us to store more toxins than others, but genetics aren't everything. And a lot of people think, oh, I have crappy genes. Well, that's just not the case. You, you can, your genes switch on or off depending on the lifestyle and all these other factors. And of course, immune function. So um, there are things that can actually boost your immune system like vitamin D. Uh, vitamin D is critical for, um, for keeping your immune system balanced so your immune system isn't overwrought. Uh, it actually can bring your immune, it can act a little bit like an immunosuppressant to bring your immune system to um, a, a really aggressive immune system down. But we don't want to do too much vitamin D because too much can really suppress your immune system to, uh, to the point where it's not functioning. So, you know, you put yourself at risk of, of viruses and other problems. So you really want uh, optimal level of vitamin D. And uh, that's more like around 50 actually. But, uh, but yeah, this can all really... Um, uh, everyone has a trigger of what kind of puts them over the edge. It can be any combination of these things, but once the trigger's pulled, it's full-blown autoimmune disease. So, so you can go to the next one. We're going to talk about the root causes. And these really vary so much from person to person. And I kind of wish they didn't because it would be so much easier to say to everybody who has an autoimmune disease, this is exactly what you do in order to put it into remission. But the problem is, is that we all vary wildly. Um, our genetic makeup, um, what we can tolerate, uh, the, the, everybody has a different lifestyle, everybody has different levels of toxicity. Um, what can irritate one person can be very different from what irritates another person. You and I, Amida, Amida could be a, um, exposed to the same amount of toxins but I might be a champion methylator. I might be able to get rid of those toxins and you might be struggling mightily because of it. So it really depends wildly from person to person. Uh, the also, other thing, sorry. sorry I was gonna say that also um, in addition to the food that of course all of us know is toxic and other things, there's an emotional factor like how all of us have been brought up. You know, there could be a trauma, a childhood trauma or emotional burden that we are carrying it could also be a factor. Uh, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that can be a big source of stress. As a matter of fact, one of my first journeys into healing my skin was I went to uh, a, uh, an author, his name is Ted Grossbart. This was years ago in Cambridge. And uh, he had talked about how skin is a man, skin diseases are a manifestation of something really eating you up emotionally. And I thought mm -hmm. it was really fascinating. Um, I don't necessarily agree if it's like a little kid that from a loving family that gets an autoimmune disease, but certainly for a lot of people, um, mm -hmm. they may have gone through some emotional trauma that's triggering their autoimmune disease. And there is some self rejection there with, with autoimmunity. So, so there's a lot of um, psychological. Uh, especially people who've gone through traumas, it can be a lot of issues there. But, um, but it is super important to figure it out. So I look at all kinds of different things. I'm going to go over with you the things that I look for. And it's sort of like being a detective. I'm peeling the onion. I'm figuring out, okay, what is driving autoimmune disease in this particular person? And before I even meet with somebody, I have them fill an extensive health history form and get their last two years of any annual physical lab work because this really helps me to identify what's going on with the person and, and invest, start the investigation. But um, as far as this uh, immune system um, you know, diagram here, the number one job for the immune system is really that of tolerance. Most of the time, the vast, vast majority of the time, we want our immune system just to tolerate our everyday experiences. But what happens is if there's really a threat, that's when you want your immune system to, to kick into high gear and counter that threat. 
but for a rich variety of reasons, the immune system can actually end up being either underactive or weak where it's unable to tolerate or counter pathogens or the toxins or things like that that we might struggle with. Or it can be skewed the other way where it becomes really hypervigilant and overreactive and it loses its ability to tolerate. And unfortunately, these two dynamics can, be, can actually coexist. You can have an overwrought immune system and have it be weak at the same time. It's sort of like uh, my teacher likes to say, a cornered, cornered wounded dog. We can end up with this vicious downward spi spiral that really creates more and more inflammation and suffering and hypervigilance. So, so we have to look, um, the, the idea is we wanna be somewhere in the middle where there's balance and wellness and tolerance. And that's really where we should be. But because of our lifestyle um, factors that we're gonna talk about, we're, we're either one way or the other when it comes to autoimmune diseases. So, so let's talk about um, the burden there, you know, what, uh, what's going on. You can go on to the next. So here are, here's the big issue with the food. Um, this is a big reason why we have autoimmune disease. And the problem we have today is that this is really what we're eating. I remember so many years I used to eat those lean cuisines. It'd be great to keep the calories down, right? Well, these have artificial colors, flavors, preservatives. Um, most of the foods have a tremendous amount of sugar, refined whole wheat or, or, or white wheat flour, and highly refined vegetable oils like canola oil or soybean oil. Um, and so these are things that your body does not recognize. And I never really thought about it. I used to just, I used to eat that Splenda all the time. That Splenda actually gives your body a little hit of, 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 uh, of a chlorine when every time you eat it, essentially. Uh, so it can really wreak havoc with your microbiome. And if you think about if you were to eat a Swedish fish, okay, and you ever look at the ingredients on this, it's all artificial colors and flavors, really, and sugar. And so you eat one of those in your immune system, you can just imagine your sentinel cells in your immune system, the lymphocytes saying, what the heck is this? I don't know, it look, doesn't look like a food, it, it, you know, should, we, should I respond to it? What should I do? And, and your immune system can get confused and, um, and it gets exposed to this day in and day out. And finally, it just says, I'm gonna attack this. It, it's, it's just, something's not right here, this isn't food. So, so you have to look at everything that you're eating and look at the ingredients. And if they're unpronounceable, you gotta, you gotta take them out of your diet. Now, the other issue is toxins. And I'm gonna spend a couple minutes talking about this because this is an area that I'm very passionate about. You look at the number of chemicals that, um, especially in the United States that are banned, there's only about 11 chemicals that are used in our everyday skincare products that have been banned. Europe's a little better about that. They ban a lot more. Uh, thousands of products actually, uh, or over 1,300 anyway, of uh, uh, um, toxic ingredients. But, um, but the problem is once you put something on your skin, it doesn't take long at all for it to get right into your bloodstream. And it doesn't have the ability of your liver to filter it out first before it, like food does, before it gets into your bloodstream. So it's almost more important to put on the products that are safe in, on your skin than it is even what you're eating. So a lot of people didn't re don't realize this, I didn't realize this, and this is a big part of my own journey with toxicity. I realized I had heavy, heavy levels of all kinds of toxic substances that I tested for and was able to figure it out. Um, Nigel's saying, yeah, they still allow aspartame in the UK, and that's, that's a real problem, it's unfortunate. But I also wanna say sunscreens and, and cleaners that we use in our home and even like flame retardants and things like that that are in our household products, it's a big problem. Um, a lot of people are using hand sanitizer now. Well, you know, obviously it's, it's important to use, but what's in it? Look at what's in that hand sanitizer. And um, I have a, a non-toxic hand sanitizer. If any of you are interested, feel free to look on my website or reach out to me and I'm happy to tell you what I use if you're in the US. Um, Shipping is kind of expensive to, to send it anywhere else. But on the top right, you can see one of the most insidious forms of toxicity that we have. And this is um, the use of glyphosate. Glyphosate is what's commonly referred to as Roundup weed killer. And a lot of people don't realize that this is used on all, just about all genetically modified crops. 
use, um, they spray them with glyphosate. And this is an endocrine disruptor. It'll, it'll actually um, mimic estrogen. And it will also interfere with your body's ability to detox, even from, even from the glyphosate itself. So this is a, a major um, catastrophe, really. And that's, this is why I really am a huge advocate for organic food and non-GMO food. And also, people don't realize that wheat and oats and some other grains are sprayed heavily with glyphosate uh, before they're harvested. And this is to dry them out. Um, but but it's, it's a big uh, issue and, um, and it, it causes immune system dysfunction. The average woman is actually exposed to over 180 toxins every day from just what they're using in their cosmetics and their shampoos and their soaps and their lotions and, and um, you know, bug spray and sunblock and all the things that we're putting on our skin. You have to think about this before you just use it. It's, 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 um, these chemicals react with each other and can really wreak havoc with your immune system. There are over 200 toxins found in umbilical cord blood on average. This means they just sample random umbilical cord blood and the moms are passing these toxins on to the babies who don't have the mature defenses that we have and the detoxification that we have. So it's super important if any of you are moms or dads to use non-toxic products on your children and um and also and and you know Johnson's baby shampoo sorry I'm not going to to single any particular product out but man you go look at the ingredients that's in there look up the ingredients and see what's safe. Um, so, so we have to, we have to look at all these things and really be careful about what we're using. Uh, you can go on to the next one. The third element, so we get, we have toxic foods, we have toxic, um, toxins, and then we have stress. And you mentioned this yourself, Amida. Stress hormones impair intracellular defenses and um, it's a prime and prime a stronger extracellular response. So we have this culture uh, th that just says go 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 and do do do, and uh, we can actually uh, this can actually um, uh, ruin your body's ability to metabolize stress hormones themselves. It burns through nutrients. It creates oxidative stress and oxidative damage, um, and your body needs to try to survive and repair. Remember we talked about repair and relax and all that. Uh, so we're supposed to be able to be stressed in order to survive. If we were years ago chased by a saber-toothed tiger, we'd want to be able to run. We'd want that adrenaline going and the cortisol shooting up and being able to run away, right? That adrenaline, that immediate, um, and that immediate drive to, to, to save ourselves. But chronically being stressed, your body doesn't know the difference. It doesn't realize you just lost your keys. And, and you're all stressed out because of that. It doesn't know the difference between that and being chased by a saber-toothed tiger. It's gonna pump out hormones that are going to keep you in a chronic state of stress. So it's super, super important to do things like relaxation. Um, actually, over time, stress impairs your digestion, not by just a little. If you eat a meal and you're all stressed out, it's like 80% less digestion going on and less absor absorption of nutrients. It also, stress will, suppress the immune system itself and impair the detoxification. So there's both physiological stress and psychological stress, and these are both issues. So uh, you really hit the, hit the nail on the head with trauma and stress, things that you have to take care of. All right, should we move on? Yeah, sure. So here's the summary. Crappy food, <laughs> stress, and toxins. This is the recipe for autoimmune disease. And if you go on to the next one, I think all of us are doing this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's why there's an awful lot of autoimmune disease out there. It's actually the fourth leading cause of death right now. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah, and you can see um, some of these uh, issues that we have that we already discussed. Yeah. Yeah. And so here's the recipe for autoimmune. It's the autoimmune square. We've got, um, I, we didn't talk about this, but uh, we talked a little bit about genetic predisposition. Some of us might have genetic SNPs. I know I had genetic SNPs that were part of the issue, but not everybody has genetic uh, tendencies to store toxins or, or have um, high levels of stress. Um, but whether you do or don't, um, it, you're, uh, 
you know, stress can lead to this, to uh, autoimmunity, but also leaky gut. And one of the worst offenders for promoting leaky gut or enhanced intestinal permeability is gluten. And that's, the, that's found in wheat and barley and rye. And it's in the sauces like soy sauce and barbecue sauce. And I know some people think it's just a big trend to go gluten-free, but if you have an autoimmune disease, uh, the gluten is triggering zonulin in your system, which will lead to leaky gut and enhanced intestinal permeability. And that will lead to, that can lead to further food sensitivities and it can lead to a hyper aggressive immune response. So we have to close that gap. And um, people think, oh, I'm about 90% gluten free that are, have an autoimmune disease. And I say, that's no good. It can't even be a crumb. And the, the um, people don't realize that the um, half-life for gluten is about six weeks. So you have to double that three months to get it out of your system, the antibodies. And so um, gluten is really important, the elimination of gluten. Also dairy, I could go into the reason why, but especially homogenized dairy can cause a leaky gut reaction as well. Uh, and, then, uh, and then also grains, some grains can mimic gluten in your, in your system, it's molecular mimicry it's called, uh, and, and wreak havoc with your system. So I usually have my clients eliminate those three things for starters. And then um, I'll, I'll avoid any of the triggers that we had, the, the, the toxicity, the crap food, all those things have to be removed. And uh, sources of inflammation and oxidative stress. So all these things have to be taken care of because that's the recipe for autoimmunity. If you undo this, your body will heal. It will. Uh, it, it, there are some tests that we do to figure things out, but you can go on to the next one. I can explain a little more about that. But basically, you put in what you need. You maximize the good stuff, uh, the raw materials, clean water is really important. Um, drinking water that doesn't have fluoride in it. Fluoride is actually a toxin. Uh, and um, put in, maximize uh, getting enough nutrients and vitamins through your food, healthy fats. Um, not those uh, plant fats, the, not the um, vegetable oils, but more like uh, coconut oil and olive oil are going to be much less inflammatory. And, um, and then you want to minimize, take out what is harmful. So toxins. I didn't even talk about, ta about mercury. That was a, that's another toxin that is really devastating. It's one of the most toxic things that human beings can have. And we, a lot of people, especially my generation, have it in their teeth. <laughs> So uh, this is not to do, do, run out and get them removed because you want to have that done responsibly, but that can be a big trigger for, for autoimmunity also. But um, infections, allergens, stress, trauma, um, viruses, all these things we want to minimize. And then we want to prioritize and, and really create an environment for healing. Lots of really restful sleep, laughter, stress reduction, um, getting out and exercising, breathing, um, and having meaningful relationships. So these are all so important. But once we do that, we, we maximize, minimize, and prioritize, we're going to have help. If we fail to do that, you're going to be sick. It's, just, it's almost as simple as that. And there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot more complexity in terms of figuring it all out. But I want you all to realize and take in that your body has the ability to heal. Now, whether you have um, if you have a really entrenched autoimmune disease and let's say multiple sclerosis and there's been a lot of damage to the myelin sheath, can you get 100% better? Maybe, maybe not. It just depends. Um, same with whatever issue you have um, with your skin issues or, or, um, or any other kind of like even um, a lot of people who have Hashimoto's, that is the autoimmune thyroid disease. If there's too much damage to your thyroid, you may have to stay on thyroid hormone for life, but, but you can prevent other autoimmune diseases from happening. So you can go to the next one. And so I'm going to talk about functional medicine. And what functional medicine basically is, is figuring out the root causes of what's going on in somebody's system and basically help addressing those causes overtly and, um, and then, you know, basically allowing the body to heal. And this is what we do in functional medicine. And, and the outcomes are phenomenal that, um, Lots of studies on how it, the outcomes have been even better than conventional medicine outcomes. 
But, uh, but the labs that I use are everyday annual physical lab work, regular labs, we call them, digestive function labs, food sensitivity labs, and some other ones, um, more organics, acids types of testing. So you can go to the next one. But regular blood work uh, is really highly available. It's, um, you know, a lot of people, most people have a, uh, like a CBC, a CMP. Um, vitamin D levels, as I mentioned, are really important. So I usually test that uh, or, or have people have it tested before coming to me. And, um, and then, uh, you know, that we can glean so much information from within reference ranges, even if everything on your annual lab work looks perfect and your doctor says looks great and signs off on it. Um, we can still tell a lot of really good information and clues as to what might be driving your autoimmune disease because reference ranges are a statistical average of 95% of the population. So if you look around you, are 95% of the people out there optimally healthy? So there's a lot of wiggle room in that reference range. So sometimes even the top third of a reference range is really not optimal. And people think, oh, I'm in the middle of the reference range, I'm fine. And it's just not necessarily the case, especially when it comes to something like thyroid function. Um, but you can go to the next one. And uh, so that's <laughs> the stool test, I, I actually recommend for most of my clients who have um, autoimmune diseases. So you can get these, they're on different websites. You can order them yourself um, and uh, see like a, a maybe a DNA assay type of test, like a GI map or a GI FX. Those are a couple of good ones where we can actually see what's going on in your gut. Are there pathogens? Is there an overgrowth? Is there an imbalance? Um, what's your digestive status? Are you digesting your food properly? Are you, are you getting it into your cells? Is there inflammation? Is there H. pylori? Are there parasites? Are there pathogenic species in there or potentially pathogenic species? So we have to look at this test and really you need to have somebody who knows what they're doing with this test, not just to go do the test yourself and try to interpret it because there's really quite a bit to, to understanding this test and it's, it's taught uh, the school I went to and the school that I'm a teacher for, the School of Applied Functional Medicine. If you're a professional, um, health professional, uh, or a wellness professional or um, medical professional, you can go and learn how to interpret these tests and help people. But uh, you can go to the next one. And then um, for a lot of my clients, I will recommend food sensitivity testing. And there are, there's pros and cons to different food sensitivity tests. I usually start with something like an IgG, immunoglobulin G uh, test. And um, and it's just a blood spot test that you can do in the company in your own home, just kind of prick your finger and go. But it can tell me a lot of um, information of foods that you might want to eliminate for a little while because even healthy foods can become triggers for autoimmunity when your immune system's overwrought. So we want to look at that as well. We can go on. And then I, I usually do uh, either an organics acids test or I'll, I'll ask somebody to get, I don't do the test myself. <laughs> I, I, I recommend getting these tests, the organic acid test, a NutraVal, an ion test, one of those. Um, and it, it is the urinary metabolites that we're testing. We can figure out what's missing and, uh, and then figure out what to do about it. So I can figure out nutrient levels, what people might be list missing, uh, you know, what's going on with them, what's going on with the neuro neurotransmitters. It even measures heavy metal toxicity as well, which can be a big driver for disease. So you can go on. So I'm going to show you some of the success stories. You can see more of them on the website. But if you go down, I want to just show you. Um, so I mentioned Hashimoto's. That's autoimmune thyroid. And if you have a sluggish thyroid, everything is going to be sluggish. And this uh, client of mine had, had um, Hashimoto's, but she also had fibromyalgia. She was in chronic joint pain. Uh, she had debilitating migraines, and she also had what I had, chronic urticaria. She had hives all over her body. So this woman was on Vicodin, Zantac, and uh, antihistamine every day. She, as a matter of fact, she took two doses of Vicodin every day, and she would go lie in bed uh, by noon every day and not be, not be able to function. And she was a mom to two kids, too, a wife and mother. So she really, really felt bad about her ability not to function with this. Well, 
after working with her, you know, uh, we did some triage work and uh, her migraines went away pretty quickly. And within a few months, her pain system, her pain symptoms started to dissipate. Her energy started improving. And uh, she was able to, with the help of her prescriber, go off of the medication. So she's no longer on um, Vicodin. She was able to go off Zantac. She no longer has acid reflux. Um, and now, uh, as a side effect, and this is a big side effect of getting healthy, she lost 95 or 90 pounds, or I think 95 to date now. So, um, so that's another thing is that people that are hanging on to weight, a healthy body doesn't hang on to weight like that. So it's, there's usually imbalances, but I remember this woman is just like this big bundle of energy. Now I got to meet her personally, which was really fun. I do most of my work online through zoom with people all over the world, but she's relatively local and I got to meet her and it was so fun to see the transformation and, um, and how she's how much better she's done. So this was probably about a year of work with her, and uh, and and it's just so com completely life changing for her. So uh, she's out of all her pain. Uh, you can go to the next one. So I work with a lot of uh, vitiligo. That's the disease Michael Jackson had, where your skin depigments. And to date, I've probably worked with over seventy five people who have that disease. And the nice thing about it is I've been able to put into remission for the vast majority of those people where they no longer lose their pigment, it stops. And then they even gain some of their pigment back, which is really fun uh, to see uh, the repigmentation of their skin. If the, if this, if the mel melanocytes on their skin have not been damaged too much, they can, they can achieve um, repigmentation. So, uh, so this, this boy I worked with is in complete remission within six months. And there's another vitiligo one. I can show you the next slide. This guy also had it. But the thing is, he, you know, this guy had some digestive issues and just wasn't feeling right. Uh, some depression and issues like that. And you can see that his digestive issues are completely gone. Um, his pigment is so much better. Actually, he told me recently he has 80% of his pigment back now. And uh, it's just, just brand, brand new life, really. His skin was, he had both melasma with hyperpigmentation and, uh, and vitiligo with a loss of pigment. So really um, amazing difference there. But um, I think that, is that it? Is there another one yeah, there? I think, I think that's pretty much it. That's it. So. Um, I hope that was helpful to you all in giving you an idea of some of the drivers and, and just uh, know that your body does have the ability to heal. And if you are not a medical professional um, and aren't interested in learning functional medicine at least, or even if you are and you aren't interested, try to work with a functional medicine practitioner or coach um, that may be able to help you. Uh, I, um, there's a directory on the school that I went to, School of Applied Functional Medicine. You can get a directory of the practitioners on there uh, to work with. And, um, and there's no reason to, to suffer with the symptoms. Uh, chronic pain is uh, almost always reversible. And, um, and uh, I know I work with a lot of arthritis and a lot of uh, chronic migraines and things like that. They're all reversible. So are mental health issues. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many people I've supported in um, reversing their uh, you know, anxiety and panic attacks and depression and things like that. So, so many things, so many uses for functional medicine. And there's a lot more um, success stories on my website if any of you wanna check them out. Um, it's just my name, jodyfranklin.com. But, um, but I wanna thank you so much, Amina for having me on. Uh, this has been lovely and I am happy to answer any questions if anyone has any questions they wanna ask. Yeah, so we are open for questions and and um, and I also want to say, I've, we've written our email. If you can't think of any questions right now, you're welcome to email us. And um, so, so we are open for questions. This is an educational session. We do it every week to educate um, the community, the advanced, you know, the, all right, so we have questions coming up. Okay. I just see some right. comments. Yeah. yeah, so these are comments. Um, um, we, we, you know, uh, some skincare line. All right, that's great. UK, there's a lot of hand sanitizers and crockery cleaning material that contain bleach. 
I think it's all over yeah, the board. That's true. We have to be careful. Um, yeah. thank, all right. So any, uh, any questions? Any questions? Okay. So I'm going to stop the share and, uh, and I'll see for the questions. Yeah, okay, sure. So and just to address the um, skincare products, if any of you are in the U.S., you're welcome to go to the store on my website and check out the variety of products that I have that are 100% free from all toxins. I did a lot of research on in this area because, you know, it's just really hard to find things that are free from toxins, but that it's available only in the U.S., unfortunately. So, sorry, sorry, Europeans, <laughs> sorry, other countries that are watching. Okay, so what will be the support for a person with nodules on their thyroid? That's the question. Yeah, so great question. So, you know, nodules can, it depends on, it's very dependent on each person on what's going on with it. I like to do a full thyroid panel to figure that out. So we look at, um, uh, you know, TSH, these are the markers that you want to look at, TSH, free T4, free T3, not total T4 and T3, but free. We want free levels of those hormones. Um, we want TPO antibodies, TG antibodies, thyroglob TG for thyroglobulin, and then also reverse T3. And these are all the markers in really a full thyroid panel. And without all that information, it's very hard to make an assessment on what are those nodules doing and what is the cause of those nodules. I like to see, look at... Um, you know, meet with somebody and sort of see, okay, what could be causing this dynamic in this, in this unique person? Because what can cause nodules in one person can be very different from what causes it in another. But um, so everybody presents differently. Uh, so, so I like to see if that's affecting your function at all. Can they be reversed? It, possibly, it just depends on the person. I'd have to really get more information on that. Uh, but, um, but to, to get that information and look at it and then, and then see if there's maybe some, if, if it's affecting the, the efficacy of your thyroid, you probably are pretty tired or maybe your hair is falling out or maybe the, the outer third of your eyebrow might be missing. These are all signs that, that, um, of hypothyroidism. So I'd like to really, um, I recommend you see a good functional medicine practitioner to really get a, uh, an assessment on it. Okay, um, so, somebody, yes, I'm asking about the, if you recommend any specific oil or skin cream or... Yeah, great question. So um, on my website, the brand um, is on there that I recommend. There's some good creams on can there. You tell us, can you tell us the brand name right now? Yeah, it's Pure Haven, but, um, but that's not going to reverse the vitiligo. So one thing about immune system, just kind of a big picture... Auto, if you have an autoimmune disease like vitiligo or anything, any of the diseases that we talked about or any of the hundreds of autoimmune diseases out there, it's not really a disease of your skin or a disease of your thyroid or a disease of your um, myelin sheath in your brain when it comes to um, MS. It's a disease of your immune system. Your immune system is maybe overwrought, maybe underreactive, maybe both. We talked about that, usually both. And it's not responding correctly. And it's, it's attacking, in, in your case, the victim is your skin, right? So you're losing your skin pigment. In my case, it was my skin. I was getting hives all over my body. But there are different drivers for this. Toxicity is a huge issue for vitiligo in, what I've been, um, in my research and what I've been working with with my clients. I've found a lot of toxicity. Sometimes there are zinc. I didn't mention zinc and copper imbalances. And in a lot of autoimmune diseases, we find zinc and copper imbalances. You want to make sure you have adequate levels of both and you're not imbalanced. And certain foods have um, more zinc and certain foods have more copper. Copper. But, um, but so we want to look from within and I have not found there's any cream or oil or any of those things that consistently work well for vitiligo. There's, I don't think there's much topically that you can use. The, what is important is that you don't put anything toxic on your skin. One of my clients is a boy who went on a camping trip and they gave every kid a mosquito necklace. I'd never heard of this before. He put the necklace on. The next day, he was depigmented all around where the necklace was. And that's when his vitiligo started and it started spreading after that. I mean, you can't, you can't make this stuff up. And, and, I, and there was a group of um, uh, factory workers who were all wearing a certain kind of protective gloves. 
uh, this was in the 1930s, and they all wound up with vitiligo on their hands, which spread for many of them to other body parts. So it, toxicity is a huge issue. So what you put on your skin is critical. You want to look at, are you using shaving cream? Are you using, um, you know, what kind of dishwasher soap are you using? What kind of laundry detergent are you using? All these things are critical. And EWG website <clears throat> is a good place to start. It's EWG Skin Deep. So you could search EWG Skin Deep Tide Detergent, and you can see all the toxins that are in that particular product, or head and shoulder shampoo, or whatever you're using. So look at these, look at the toxins that you're using, um, and, and see, and, and try to minimize the toxins that you're using, because it's super important. It's a big part of confusing your immune system. So I I was also going to add that uh, Ayurveda, you know, is another um, uh, completely, completely medical system that also has had a lot of success, you know, with the uh, Vitalgo. How do you say it? Vitalgo or Vitalgo? Um, so like that, that, yeah, Vitalgo. And, 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 and they also recommend detoxification and the similar kind of process for functional medicine is saying. So, so that's something if someone is interested in, we can send you... Um, those details as well if someone is interested. So we have another question. Do you use herbal supplements like slippery elm powder or do you use um, um, poo based? What, uh, what kind of supplements? I think that's what I'm understanding the question is. If you use any slippery elm powder. Uh, it depends. So if somebody has a problem like acid reflux or if they have H. pylori overgrowth. Now, everybody has some H. pylori, but if it shows up in your stool test, it's usually a problem, even if it's not over the reference range. If you have enough in your gut that it's actually coming out in your stool, we know that that's an issue. So I do recommend slippery elm in that case. It just depends on the person. Now, you might have a really good digestive system and not need the slippery elm, but sometimes I like a combination of uh, what are called mucilaginous herbs, which for um, slippery elm is a mucilaginous herb. There's other ones like marshmallow or aloe vera. Um, there's a good product Thorn makes that's called um, GI NCAP that has all a uh, nice variety of uh, mucilaginous herbs that are really great to um, to coat and soothe your gut lining. So um, so that's a that's a it just again depends on on what's going on with the person. And so if they do have H pylori, I think slippery elm is a great. Um, or, or acid reflux is a great supplement. Okay. I'm not sure what I meant, which supplements I use. I use a variety of supplements, mostly the medical grade ones, kind of. Um, depends. Thorn's a really good name. Metagenics, um, Zymogen. Uh, uh, I use a lot of variety. Designs for health. I use, um, there's, there's a lot of great ones out there, but there's a lot of crappy ones out there. And I find that some of my clients are out there taking Flintstones chewables or Centrum, um, Centrum vitamins. And if you look at the ingredients, there's artificial colors and flavors in your vitamins. It's like, why are they doing that? Or sugar, or added sugar, you know, things that suppress your immune system in your vitamins. And then there's crappy forms of these supplements. So when you're looking at B vitamins, which are really critical for um, detoxification, you don't want to use cyanocobalamin. And if you go look at the vitamins that you're buying, if you're buying your vitamins at Walmart, Chances are they have, for vitamin B12, it's cyanocobalamin, it's not methylcobalamin, and your body doesn't really recognize it very much. It's probably not getting into your cells. Some people it is, it just depends on the person. But for, for people with autoimmune diseases, I'm a real stickler for which supplements they're going to use if they're, if they're considering supplements. Um, they also wanna look at um, vitamin B6. A lot of people will use um, pyridoxine, HCL, for vitamin B6, which, Again, your body cannot recognize, a lot of people cannot convert um, pyridoxal to P5P, which is the final form. And you really want one that has P5P, pyridoxal 5-phosphate for a vitamin B6. So there's all, I mean, I could go on and on and on about the forms of vitamins, even zinc people take. Some people take zinc oxide or magnesium oxide. These are not well-absorbed um, nutrients. And so you have to be super careful about them. That's why I like to work with the better brands. But even among the better brands, some of them still don't have the right forms of the right things. So there, there's no one line of supplements that gets everything right, in my opinion. Uh, so I, I pick and choose from different ones, different lines. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. 
Okay, so we have a few minutes left. Uh, so there's someone is asking, is there a spectrum for autoimmune diseases? I feel like I fall within a range, um, a range within the range. That's what I'm saying. I'm very interested, please, in the Ayurvedic options. We can send you that. I mean, we, I'm not a doctor. We can just send you uh, other uh, Ayurvedic things. And then, um, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Is there any spectrum for autoimmune diseases? That's the question, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna um, definitely. If if you can even un underneath this post um, post about the Ayurvedic um, interventions, I yeah. think that would be helpful too. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, really absolutely. I'm just sharing what uh, what I you know when this when when we hear, and we have a lot of people who are talking about different things. So I'm just trying to help. That's all. <laughs> Wonderful. And so as far as the spectrum, yeah, absolutely. There's spectrum. I mean. Uh, you know, there's people, let's, let's take eczema, for example. I mean, that, that slide that had the spectrum on it, you can go back and look at that too. But some people might have eczema. That's not really a full-blown autoimmune disease, but that's your immune system pretty, pretty angry, right? So the, the, the problem with autoimmunity also is once you start going down that road where you're kind of getting on that spectrum, uh, or even sub, suboptimal thyroid where your autoimmune antibodies are high but not above the reference range you know so you're not diagnosable but you're definitely on the spectrum you're on your way there right mm -hmm. so so it's important to address these dynamics before it becomes a full-blown autoimmune disease or if you have a little bit of psoriasis that's a sign psoriasis is a is an autoimmune disease and the big problem is guys once you get one autoimmune disease you are many times more likely to get another autoimmune disease within five years so I have clients that come to me sometimes with four or five autoimmune diseases. And you know, you might have a little eczema today or a little psoriasis today that doesn't really bother you very much, but then you know, a year later you come in and we got Hashimoto's and you're exhausted, or you know, something else, um, you know, arthritis that's that's really uh, affects a lot of people as well. So yeah, I mean, you wanna you wanna look at this and see if your um sometimes those markers of inflammation are are visible in your um, everyday annual physical lab work. You could see what your C-reactive protein is if you want CRP. See if that's um, high. You want that at a nice low low level. That can be a sign that there's problems. Um, we want to look at your red blood count. If it's um, you want it really around seven. If your red blood counts, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not red, white blood count around seven, not your red one. But if it's if it's really low there may be something going on. We wanna look at your neutrophils and lymphocytes, see what that ratio is, see if there maybe is something infectious going on. But you wanna dig and figure out why your immune system is angry. And like I said, it can be multifaceted and it usually is, there's usually a recipe and it's different in every person and what causes vitiligo in you or can be completely different from what causes another or what causes um, any kind of um, disease is very different in each person. All right, so, but yeah, Lisa, I think uh, she has PCOS and she has, um, you know, so you're welcome to email us if you have more questions and, uh, you know, we can, uh, we can direct them to Jody or we can give you whatever you like to, whatever we can help. All right, yeah. so any questions, uh, let's see. So, okay, so there's quite a few questions here, which I need. So <laughs> I do recommend the same treatments for auto-inflammatory diseases, the same as autoimmune disease. She has, I don't even know what this disease is. I'm really sorry. Um, Hydrantiasis? Uh, I, I don't know how to say it. H-I-D-R-E-N. What, what is this disease? I have no idea. Perhaps she could list that on the Facebook page under, and I can, I can answer it later because yes. I don't know. And I'm not really sure I understand that question. So I think it's, I think it's, it's uh, why don't you send us an email? I, I said our email is care at nourishtalk.com. That'll be easier. So that's, you know, it's private. It's confidential. So we can... Uh, forward it to Jody and she can help you, no problem. Uh, so, yeah. okay, so um, then the other thing is somebody's asking about your consultation, recurring monthly, weekly consultation, how much it costs. Um, can you give a ballpark of what I'm looking on a monthly basis? Do you, do you want to answer this right now or you want someone to, uh, you want to send it an email to me and I can send it to them, whichever way, it's up to you, how you want to Yeah, do that's it. fine, they can send an email. Unfortunately, yeah. you know, this takes a lot of behind the scene work that you're paying yeah. for. With any yeah. functional medicine person, they don't, they don't take insurance generally because you can't do functional medicine in 15 minutes. But before I meet with someone, I get their last two years of lab work. I want you know, to fill out the health history form on my website. I usually spend almost two hours going through it before and mapping it out and figuring out what I think is going on. 
I meet with people for 90 minutes. I'll tell you what I think is at play. And then afterwards, I'll send detailed follow-up notes and we'll talk about some action steps you can start on right away to hopefully get you some relief. Um, as far as Lisa goes and, and PCOS, that is definitely something that is reversible. And um, I think Lisa, as a student at SAFM, you're gonna learn that I'm pretty sure, you're not sure if I'm remembered correctly, but, um, but you will learn all about that. But what she said is she breaks out in hives and psoriasis and her sister has lupus. And this is what I'm talking about. Genetic tendencies to store toxins, MTHFR, could be uh, something that's at play. Um, you don't necessarily need to get that test, but you guys should definitely look at toxicity. If, the, if autoimmune diseases and cancer run in your family, that could be something that's at play. Okay, any last comment? We are at the hour right now. This is very engaging um, conversation we've had with Jody. A uh, lot of engagement, a lot of questions. Uh, all right, so, uh, so, all right, so Lisa, I think she's a student, so, you know, if you- Yeah, she signed up for that, some courses, but uh, okay. do the semester, Lisa. <laughs> make all the difference but anyway yes. guys uh thank you so so much amida this was lovely and um what a great uh group you have and uh yeah you guys should definitely check out the Araveta um yeah, resources absolutely. as well and apologies my i don't know why fb live didn't work otherwise we would, we would have had a lot more engagement because we typically stream our sessions live on fb and so apologies for that i don't know what happened on facebook but we will be posting this uh, recording on on facebook um in a day or so that's wonderful okay and yeah if you guys don't mind sharing it with your friends so all um, it is um, hard work can pay off if once it's posted on facebook just share it with uh share with as many people as you you can uh and so to help people because you don't have to live with an autoimmune disease. You really don't. If there's, there's things that are causing it and you, getting to the root cause is, is critical and taking all those steps that we talked about are really critical and your body will heal. So thanks again. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for listening in and your comments and feedback. Uh, amazing session. Th thank you so much, Jody, for, for being with us. And we will be sharing this on Facebook in a, and just give us a couple of days and we'll share with everyone. Any other questions, you can email us. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thanks, Amida. Take care.